Hi everybody, my name's Antoinette and this is Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insight into some great games for game night. So welcome to my first impressions video for Crescent Moon and the reason for this is this is a four to five player game which is a little bit outside of my realm um, but I can't wait to tell you all the fun I had with it. <laughs> Crescent Moon is a game set in the ancient Middle East, where warring factions are doing their best to seize power and change history. You play as a unique faction that has its own objectives and ways of scoring points. Through conflict and intrigue, who will emerge victorious? Thing one, what's this game all about? So Crescent Moon is a game that's set in the ancient Middle East where warring factions are trying to claim power and change history. And what this means for you is that you are leader of one of these factions. You get to play of one of the four or five, um, depending on your player count, um, that are in the box. And each one is unique. They do something different. They have different ways to win, different ways to interact with the board, um, different ways of scoring points, that kind of thing. Um, so all asymmetry here. Um, so theme wise though, well, God, there doesn't feel like there's a lot of it. Really, this game could have been about anything. I don't feel like the kind of the Middle Eastern really brought anything other than kind of some names um, and whatnot. But yeah, I just, I didn't feel very connected to it. it. This is definitely a game more about what you're doing than, you know, where it's set. Now, similar titles to this, um, it did give me kind of Twilight Imperium vibes in the sense that there's kind of lots of negotiation going on between players and who will kind of attack who and that kind of stuff, but on a smaller scale. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? Well, Crescent Moon combines area control and area influence with action selection. You'll play as a unique faction with a unique way to win. And they are set, the ones in the box, and they do interact with each other in kind of specific ways. Um, and so on your turn, you'll get to perform an action. You'll get to perform four actions total in a round, and then you'll play for three rounds or four if you want to play a longer game. So there is a set number of actions you're going to get to play with. Um, and these actions, while they're slightly different for each faction, are kind of similar. Um, so you'll be doing things like putting influence out on the board, um, controlling zones, putting out buildings, um, interacting with each other. All that good stuff comes from these actions. But the key concept I suppose you want to get from this is that influencing zones is really important because it'll often allow you to build into them. But also influencing zones allows you to have a say in what other people do in the zone you have influence in. Um, so you'll have people asking, is it okay if I build my building here or if I'm going to attack zones so here, will you support me or will you go against me? Um, and that's a really kind of fun thing to play with. I also particularly enjoy the card tableau. So you can buy cards for if you were to go to combat or if you want to interact with people. And each of these um, have colors that are connected to the player colors. And if you buy um, another player, another player's colors card, God, that was a lot of C's, um, they get the money for the card um, as opposed to the bank. And I thought that was a really interesting way to go about things. Um, overall, this is a really polished um, and kind of fun game. It's very very interactive area control um, and I liked how it was put together I enjoyed the asymmetry and uh, yeah it was fun thing three on the table so yeah this one's really inviting it's got this kind of sandy colored tile thing with the lovely little buildings going on as the board like it's nice and um, the problem of course is the tableau for the cards is huge it's like a big long line I don't know where you're supposed to put that or have anybody be able to read all those cards um, so yeah it takes up that kind of space um, it's not too bad actually to set up. There's not like everybody gets their pieces and things like that. It, it's fine. And it takes two and a half hours for four of us to play. And yes, this is a four to five player game only. Now, to be fair, it didn't feel like it took two and a half hours. So you can take that whatever way you like. 
Um, I will comment on the rule book though because it was really, really, really good. Um, it was a fantastic rule book. But what really stood out for me is the player aids. And this is the best player aid I've ever seen. I wish every game had something like this. And basically what it was was a little booklet um, and it told you what your faction was about, how you might want to play them, what other factions you could interact with or get kind of bonuses from or who you might want to watch out for. Um, then I had a very clear list of exactly what would score points when things would score points the values of particular things and it went into like small amount of detail on what all of your actions did um it was really exceptionally good and um, it's the kind of thing i i love because i'm the kind of player that every so i might want to ask a question and you don't want to be asking questions the whole time when you can look it up yourself and i didn't have to trawl through a rule book to just check something yeah this was outstanding and i'd be very comfortable teaching new players to play this based on that little book it was it was that good so bravo osprey games that was fantastic um the replayability i can't talk to here because i've only played the game once but i think it's got plenty of potential thing four how does this game look and feel well the box art really sold this one for me um i love that artwork on the cover the hint of gold it's all a bit of class and mystery i was very eager to kind of delve into this box um, and the only other place really we see the art is on the cards um, and that fits in kind of nicely with the theme I think as well. Um, the component quality here is very very good, everything is really lovely, I especially like the, the buildings that are unique for each player, um, I like that a lot. Um, like overall this game looks fine actually, everything is kind of acceptable but not necessarily exceptional either. Thing 5, is this game actually any good? So as you know, this is a first impressions video because I normally only play two players. So it was a special event to gather together to play Crescent Moon. And you know what, it, it really showed me that I should probably play games with more people more often. Um, because this game really brings out the best in group play, I think. Um, you know, which is like banter, interactivity and ease of play. It's got it all going for it. Um, I, I watch friendships form and break. I watch alliances. I watch people backstab each other all over these tiny little pieces on the board. And it was pretty fun and entertaining to boot. Um, I'm, I'm annoyed that this game is exclusionary with its player count. Like if you have a games group that can have four to five players, more power to you, that's fantastic. But I do think this sets it in a different league than your average game, which is such a shame because I'd really like to play it again. Um, and I think this is a game a lot of people might really enjoy. Um, but overall, like I have to say that while the game is simple, I wish it had been a little bit more exciting. I think I think you as the players have to bring the excitement. I don't think there was anything particularly satisfying about pulling off specific moods, moves. It was more about getting one up on another player or helping someone out or not helping someone out when you said you would. One of those situations, so that's fun. Um, I do love how procedural the game feels. There are phases, specific actions, things happen, like there's timing here. And I really like that. I never felt lost in what was happening next and I could prepare myself for future events. Um, so yeah, I had a hell of a lot of fun with Crescent Moon. Um, yeah, and I really love um, how it kind of, what it brought out of my games group. Um, and I hope I'll get to see more of it in the future. Do I think you should have Crescent Moon in your collection? I think if you've got the game group for it and you would like an easy asymmetric game where people can argue and enjoy each other's company, I think this is a winner. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Crescent Moon, why not shout them off in the comment box below? Tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.